Hey, it's Mike here, and today, frailty and protein. In particular, a very recent March 2022 study that compared animal protein and plant protein in the context of frailty. We're also going to add six or seven studies to explore the frailty protein connection that they have found in the study that we're going to get to. I'm not gonna give any spoilers yet, but first, a lot of people tend to associate eating more plants with more frailness. I've been vegan for over 10 years now and it's probably the main thing. Vegan protein or plant protein equals frail and weak. Animal protein equals strong and muscular and on and on. I have videos on the masculinity thing as well but it also seems to be the case that there's an extra push now to eat more protein as you are getting older to prevent this frailty, to prevent muscle loss and to hopefully live longer and have a better quality of life. But yeah, frailness is highly connected to survival and I feel bad for anybody who has to deal with their own frailty. It's not something that we want, obviously. So anything we can do to prevent the early onset of frailty is great. Enough rambling, let's just get to the basics of the study. Here it is, and I would consider it one of the higher quality epidemiological studies we have in terms of the cohort that it follows, the nurses health study in particular, which means we're having people who are more or less socioeconomically the same, and they followed 86,000 women for 22 years. These scientists were heavy stalkers. <laughs> How have I never made that joke before? Anyway, they did not particularly look at people eating any dietary pattern, like a vegan diet, vegetarian diet, etc. They were just looking at protein intake, and they were likely setting out to answer the question, what's the best type of protein to prevent frailty in middle and older age? And so that brings me to how they actually measured frailty. How do you do that? What's it all about? Well, they looked at five different areas, which included fatigue, resistance, which is muscular strength, ambulation. Ambulation has to do with aerobic capacity, illness and loss of weight, collectively becoming the acronym FRAIL. It's not the Justice League we needed. <laughs> but it's the Justice League we have. And I would say this is also a bit of a proxy for the quality of life that people were having and that is specifically emphasized by the question in the fatigue category, did you have a lot of energy? People who feel good tend to have more energy, feeling worse, less energy. When I think of frailty, I just think of sort of a physical state, but of course that has a lot to do with what illnesses people have, so they looked at that as well. And here is a list of them, and you're probably thinking, hey, plant protein consumption is associated with a lower risk of a lot of those, like diabetes and hypertension and on and on. We're not getting to the answer yet. Don't jump the gun. Don't even, I'm not gonna put chapters in, so you can't even skip to the results chapter. How does that, <laughs> now people are gonna be scrubbing through the video, don't. Anyway, they also, of course, looked at dietary intake and they did that through questionnaires. People tend to be like, questionnaires are horrible, but hey, these were health professionals that were doing these questionnaires. So certainly they would be more accurate than your average people at least. And they measured it several times over the course of 22 years. So even more data points there. And now we can finally get to the results. Quote, women with a higher intake of plant protein had a lower risk of developing frailty after adjustment for all relevant confounders. And get this in contrast, those with higher intake of animal protein had a higher risk of frailty, both statistically significant results. And you might be reading that and saying, ah, oh, 7% higher risk of frailty for high animal protein intake? That doesn't sound like much. Well, before they went crazy with the confounders just adjusting for age, that was actually a 40% increased risk of frailty. And in their model, they adjusted for a lot of things that they certainly should have, but sometimes they just throw things in there that when you study the effect of animal foods on the body, you go, that doesn't really make that much sense. For example, they adjusted for BMI, probably incorrectly, because animal foods are often obesogenic. They also adjusted for statins, which certainly would be influenced somewhat by animal fat. And then finally, worst of all, in terms of animal fat, they adjusted for saturated fat consumption. That's the actual feature of animal protein that we're always talking about. It's not some bug that you adjust away for. No, that seems to be too causally interlinked to adjust for there. So I don't know. If I had to guess that true risk is probably somewhere between 7% and 40%, but we'll never know. It's still increased and statistically significantly increased. Despite that quote, substituting just 5%. <clears throat> Gotta remember, I can't add words to quotes. Quote, substituting 5% of energy from plant protein intake at the expense of animal protein, dairy protein, or non-dairy animal protein was associated with, end quote, roughly 32 to 42% reduced risk of frailty. So adding plants, reduced risk. 
So you're getting the drift that despite people being told to eat more dairy and dairy protein to reduce the risk of frailty through middle age, quote, a higher intake of plant protein, but not animal or dairy protein was associated with a lower risk of frailty. Yeah. And that's probably why this is not sweeping through mainstream media and news articles and everything. And that's because all the industries that tend to pay for the news coverage of that, to some extent, not always, not everything is a conspiracy, but those industries are absolutely not being benefited from these findings. Another huge finding that could be easy to miss in this study, but I looked closely for you. If that's what you don't pay me for. Well, some of you thankfully support me on Patreon. Many thanks to you. But it was that high animal protein was actually associated with a 35% increased risk of having greater than or equal to five illnesses. There was literally a stepwise relationship between eating more animal protein and having five or greater illnesses at a greater percentage. That is quite shocking and astounding. And another huge takeaway that would ruffle some feathers for sure is that eating more animal protein was associated with an 18% higher risk of having low strength well, plant protein was associated with a 9% lower risk of having low strength. In other words, plant equals muscles and animal protein equals weakness <laughs> when it comes to this cohort of nurses. And of course, we can't delineate causation from epidemiology, but at the very least, this should be a major red flag for people who are trying to down all of that animal protein in order to prevent themselves from getting frail when they get older. More people than you would think. But, but wait, who funded this study? Was it Big Broccoli? Oh my God, I found it right here. It was the Instituto of Salad. Clearly some industry funding. Oh wait, what? Salud just means health. This was actually Carlos III Health Institute as well as the US's National Institute of Health with a grant from them. And as you might have guessed, that institute is in Spain and it kind of makes me want to make some Institute of Salad shirts. Let me know if you would want any of those. Right up there with the, of course, Potato University uh, merch that is available down below. All right, now we briefly have to get to mechanism because A, it's really interesting and B, I just need to know what the connection is here. and. There are potentially several, and the first of which we have to think about just the general frailty that can occur through aging slowly over time, but we have to remember the sort of overnight frailty that can happen from having an illness and being bedridden. You can lose a lot of muscle mass pretty quickly when you're older, so it's important to try to prevent that. And of course, animal protein and its fat have you know, a driving force for various diseases, and we can look to type two diabetes and the insulin resistance that is the hallmark of it being caused by, as this paper mentioned, saturated fat leading to that ceramide toxicity and then insulin resistance. We also have the clogging of arteries through that saturated fat as well. And that brings me to a study like this one saying that even subclinical atherosclerosis, meaning no one's having any real symptoms at that point is still associated with frailty in men at least. And then moving to this study, it appears that lower cardiac function is also associated with frailty as one might guess. But the most shocking finding of this study was that frailty and cardiac function were more associated than any other organ system that the study looked at. So our heart is the heart of frailty prevention, so it's good to keep it nice and clear. Anyway, we also have that long-term slow frailty buildup that I was talking about earlier, and that could have to do with the whole inflammaging thing. As this paper mentions, it could be the result of inflammatory compounds like interleukin-6, and moving on to this one, it says, hey, it could actually be some gut dysbiosis induced inflammation. You know, my last gut video was the biggest flop ever. Otherwise I'd talk more about gut stuff. I'm not bitter, but then of course we have just that general inflammation. And I saw that Dr. Garth Davis had posted about the study and he pointed to the mTOR pathway of aging, which again is connected to inflammation. For those that don't remember, for mTOR from this paper, it's the mammalian target of rapamycin, which is an evolutionarily conserved nutrient sensing protein kinase that regulates growth and metabolism in all eukaryotic cells. Basically it has to do with growth and it can be connected to inflammation. Pro-inflammatory cytokines are regulated by transcription factors sensitive to redox potential through mTOR signaling. Basically it's saying that mTOR has a role in inflammation. We know it has a role in aging and it is boosted by animal protein, sort of accelerates things through that signaling pathway. So the answer for keeping mTOR based inflammation down would of course be to consume less animal protein. 
Who would have guessed that I would say that as Mike the Vegan? In the end, this is just another piece of information that directly conflicts with the popular notion that you need to be eating animal protein to maintain or build muscle mass and strength and not be frail. The animal agriculture industry uses that line of reasoning to push their products and, and people, everyday people use that line of reasoning in order to justify their own eating habits, eating a lot of different animal body parts. However, higher animal protein appears to be from this study associated with low strength in this cohort, which is honestly pretty shocking. You think it would at least be neutral, but no. And then of course it's associated with having a ton of those illnesses, which is a huge point that should not be understated. And finally, dairy should lose its spot as that required protein in order to maintain bodily health into older age, because apparently there's there's no connection here, at least from this study. And I just can't shut up about how you know this would just be, boom, Guardian, Newsweek, Daily Mail, all those things, if it was the opposite, this would be shouted from the rooftops that plant protein makes you all caps, weak and frail. Oh man, anyway, let me know down below what you think about all this. Feel free to like and subscribe, support the channel in any way that you can, including watching that previous gut video on psychobiotics that I put a ton of work into, but I think might have been suppressed because it had the word poop in the title. And now that they've seen that the word poop is in this video, they're probably gonna suppress it too. Anyway, thanks for watching.